Yo, what's going on everyone? Itzy Power here with another Genshin Impact Guide video. For today, I'm going to be covering Xing Qiu. He is one of the best 4-star characters in this game, and I'm going to go over why. He can be built as an insane burst DPS, or he can be built as a pure support which can provide so much utility for your main DPS characters. In this video, I'm mainly going to talk about him as a DPS character, go over his talents and constellations, as well as talking about the best artifacts, weapons, as well as team comps for him. And lastly, I will quickly go over his support build as well. So smash that like button and let's get the showcase started. Jingcho is amazing because he can do some of the highest amounts of burst damage in this game. Although with that being said, in order to really maximize that burst damage, he does require a team that is built in supporting him. However, even without his elemental skill, which is where the main portion of his burst damage comes from, his elemental burst is still going to deal a ton of consistent damage. But speaking about his skills, let's go over them now. Starting off with this elemental skill, Gu Hua Sword, Fatal Rain Screen. When you cast this ability, Xing Shou is going to slash a sword twice, dealing hydro damage on both hits. Not only is this a damaging skill, there's a very interesting second effect that happens too. This ability is going to generate three rain swords around the character. You can think of this as like a shield made out of swords. While this ability is active, whenever a character takes damage, a rain sword will shatter, and this will actually reduce the amount of damage taken. Along with that, the rain swords are going to increase the character's resistance to interruptions, so you're not going to be getting knocked around, knocked back too much when you do get hit by an enemy. Now, there is a few effects to the scale as well. 20% of Xing Chiu's hydro damage is going to be converted into additional damage reduction for the rain swords. This is nuts, because with a burst DPS build, you're already going to be having a hydro damage goblet for his artifact spot, which is going to lead to more damage reduction. The maximum amount of damage reduction that can be obtained from this way is 24%, so you stack that on with a default of 20%, and that is a lot of damage reduction. Using this ability is going to apply wet status to the character or enemy surrounding the character. One thing to note about this too, be careful that you don't have a cryo debuff on your character when you're activating this elemental skill or you will freeze yourself. But other than that, this skill is ridiculously good, it does it all, it has an insane multiplier for damage and it gives so much utility. When you level up this talent, you're going to be getting 1% of damage reduction per level along with an increase in damage. Past talent level 9, only the damage is going to go up. The other downside with this elemental skill is that it does have a long cooldown of 21 seconds and a duration of the rain swords is at 15 seconds. Moving on, let's talk about his elemental burst. When Xing Chou activates his elemental burst, he's going to create the maximum number of rain swords possible. So while the ability is active, whenever a rain sword breaks, it's going to get replaced by another one. But this isn't even the best part about this elemental burst. Along with the rain swords, Xing Shou is also going to activate something called a Rainbow Blade Work. Whenever your active character uses their normal attack, Water Swords are going to get created and they're going to hit your enemies. This ability is so good because it allows your character to do so much consistent damage. So pretty much with this ability active, you turn into like Gilgamesh from Fate Stay Night. Like you can even just do your normal attacks from afar and these Rain Swords are going to be launched at your enemies and your opponents. So with this ability too, you can even swap out to another character 
and they will still get the full benefits of it. If you're looking at building Xingqiu as more of like a support character, this ability is going to be the bread and butter because you would activate this ability, then you would swap over to a character that relies on a lot more normal attacks, such as Shan Ling, D Luke, and Kaching. Obviously, those are just examples. Uh, the duration of this ability does last for 15 seconds, with the cooldown being 20 seconds. So if you have some really good energy recharge artifacts, you can get some pretty crazy uptime with the skill. And as long as you're generating enough orbs to cycle that elemental burst over and over again. When you do level up his elemental burst, the damage of each hit is going to increase. Now guys, in terms of talent level up priority, I would focus on leveling up his elemental skill first to maximize his burst damage. But not only that too, remember you do get reduced damage reduction as well. After that, I would focus on leveling up his elemental burst and then lastly his normal attack. Now, let's move on and take a look at his passive talents. His first passive talent is Hydropathic. This talent is so good because it makes the rain swords generated from his elemental burst and scale even better. Whenever a rain sword is shattered or whenever the, the duration of it expires, the character that is out on the field is going to heal for 6% of his max HP per sword. Although, this doesn't do much for his damage, but that little extra bit of healing and sustain is quite nice. His next passive talent is Blades and Mist Raindrops. This is another great passive talent where Xingqiu is flat out going to get 20% more Hydro Damage bonus. This leads to his ability stealing more damage as well as increasing the amount of damage reduction from his Rain Swords. And lastly, whenever you craft talent materials, he's going to have a 25% chance of refunding a portion of the materials used. This is so helpful in the long run because it's going to save you a ton, a ton of resin. Next, let's take a look at Xing Chiu's constellations. First thing I'm going to say here, if you really want to maximize the damage of his elemental skill, then having C4 unlocked is going to be the most ideal. However, even without it, C0 can still be viable and he can still deal a ton of damage. But either way, let's start with C1. For C1, the maximum amount of rain swords is going to be increased by 1. This is great because it leads to more damage reduction and healing. C2 is going to extend the duration of his ultimate by 3 seconds and also reduce the hydro resistance of opponents getting hit by the swords by 15% for 4 seconds. This is another great constellation for him, it's just going to add so much more damage to his elemental burst. C3 is the standard stuff, it's going to increase his elemental burst scale by 3. And guys, C4, this is the constellation that really spikes up his damage. Whenever his elemental burst is active, his elemental skill is going to gain an extra 50% damage. This is crazy good. And this really allows him to deal a massive amount of damage as long as his elemental burst is up. So again guys, C4 is the most ideal to maximize damage, but of course it is not needed. C5 again, more standard stuff, that's going to increase his elemental scale by 3, which is amazing, because that's just going to give him so much more damage. And lastly, C6 is going to increase the damage from his sword rain after the first two attacks. On the third hit, it's going to do a lot more. Along with this, he's going to regenerate 3 energy whenever his sword rain hits an enemy. So C6 is pretty damn good to the overall kit of Xing Chou, but it is not going to increase the damage of his burst potential. Now, to build a burst build, there's two builds that I would recommend. The first build is what I'm running right now, and I would only recommend this if you have a pyro character on the team. This is going to be the best way to maximize his damage. So with that being said, this is going to be the full 4-piece Lava Walker build. The full 4-piece Lava Walker is going to effectively give his elemental skill an extra 35% damage to enemies who are affected by Pyro. I'm sure a lot of you guys already know this, but this works perfectly because in order to maximize his damage, we're going to need to utilize the elemental reaction of Vaporize. And of course, that reaction comes from a Hydro hitting an enemy that is already afflicted by Pyro. So now, not only are we getting the damage bonus from Vaporize, we are also getting the full 4-piece bonus of the Lava Walker set. With everything stacked together, Xing Chou is going to hit so hard with his elemental skill. Now, for those that don't want to utilize the Vaporize reaction because they prefer an Electro team, Freeze team, or if they just want to use Xing Chou as more of like a support character for their main DPS character, then I would recommend the two-piece Noblesse Oblige and two pieces of the Hydro Artifact set instead. Xing Chou's elemental skill is still going to hit like a truck with his elemental skill because of that extra Hydro damage bonus. And not only that, but the two-piece of Noblesse is going to give more damage towards his elemental burst. Now, in terms of main stats, there's a few ways that you can build your Xing Chou. This is going to come down to personal no preference and ultimately what you want from him is that the main stats are going to be the same whether or not you're going for the four piece lava walker or the two piece noblesse and two pieces of hydro 
If you want to maximize this damage, then of course you're going to want attack percentage on the Sans Artifact spot. Now, for those that do want more damage and utility from his Elemental Burst, then you can run Energy Recharge on the spot instead. For Goblet, there's really only one clear choice here, and that is the Hydro Damage Artifact spot. This is going to give Xing Chou an insane amount of overall damage, as well as providing Xing Chou with more damage reduction from those ranged swords. And lastly, for the Circlet spot, if you went attack percentage on Sands, you would either go crit rates or crit damage here, and this is going to depend how much crit rate you do have. If you have roughly 40% crit rate, then I would run a crit damage crown. If not, then I would probably stick to crit rates instead. And for those who are running energy recharge on Sands, you can do attack percentage here as another option. And lastly, for those who are looking to build Xing Chou as more of a DPS support, then the full 4 piece of Noblesse is a great alternative as well. Now, let's take a look at his weapon choices. For myself, I am running the Festering Desire. This is a phenomenal weapon for him, just because it's going to increase his elemental scale damage and crit rates by quite a bit. Along with that, the energy recharge as a base stat is a great choice, because it's going to help him recycle his elemental burst, which is ultimately going to lead to more overall damage. So, this weapon, along with the full 4-piece Lava Walker set, is really going to boost his elemental scale damage. For those who are already using the Festering Desire for another character, Lion's Roar is a great alternative here, because it increases even more damage to enemies who are a affected by Pyro or Electro. Now, if you don't have either one of these, then the Sacrificial Sword and Faithonia Sword are amazing choices as well. I really can't emphasize how good the Sacrificial Sword is for Xing Chou, because of how long his cooldown is on his elemental skill, being able to refresh it really helps. But keep in mind, you will get more utility with this weapon, but you will lose out on burst damage compared to like using the Festering Desire or even the Lion's Roar. Now, for those who don't have any of the mentioned weapons, then I would recommend the 3 star weapon Harbinger of Dawn. This weapon is great because it does give crit damage as a base stat, which is going to maximize its damage from all of the sources and it also gives crit rate if his HP is above 90%, which typically he will be most of the time because of the healing and damage reduction from his ranged swords. Alright guys, so to maximize his elemental skill damage, there's a few team comps that can, you can run. The team comp that I like to utilize really revolves around other 4 star characters and you don't need any 5 star characters to make this work. The team for that is going to be Sucrose, Bennett, Xingqiu, and Ember. Now there is a very specific reason why I have Ember here and I'm going to explain that in the next section of the video where I break down the combo and explain step by step on how to pull it off. For those of you who are looking to run like a standard vaporized team comp, then I would suggest starting your team building with a pyro DPS such as Diluc, Shanling, or Klee, Xingqiu obviously, an animal character to reduce the elemental resistance of your enemies, and lastly a healer or a dedicated shielder on the team. There are so many different variations on how you can utilize him on a team, and it's really hard to go wrong with it. Another team comp that has risen up lately with the introduction of the new Cryo and Hydro artifact sets are the freeze comps that we've been seeing. You could do something like Mona, Xingqiu, Changyun, Diona, where you're essentially spamming your skills and constantly freezing your enemies, so they don't even have a chance to fight back. Now, if this is the route that you're going with, remember, you won't be using the Lava Walker set anymore, but instead, two pieces of Noblesse and two pieces of Hydro Artifact set is going to be your best choice. And lastly, this is something that I'd wanted to mention as well. For those with their main DPS character being an Electro character like Fischl, Lisa, or Kaching, you could go for an Electro Charge team instead rather than the whole Vaporized team comp. So you would have your main DPS character, Xingqiu, and then an animal character to reduce the ele electro elemental resistance of your enemies, and lastly, a healer or a dedicated uh, character that can provide like a shield for your team. With that being said, you can put Xingqiu on the four piece Thunder Soother piece artifact set, and whenever his elemental skill and burst hits an enemy affected by electro, it's going to deal a lot more damage towards them. If you decide to go this route, I would consider putting elemental mastery sands on Xingqiu and the weapon iron sting instead because electro charge damage benefits the most from elemental mastery. Okay guys, I'm going to break down now how you can pull off Shang Chou's huge burst damage combo. So, to start, you want to activate his elemental burst and land a normal attack. The enemy is now going to debuff with Hydro and you're going to swap over to your animal character to reduce the enemy's elemental resistance to Hydro. For me, that character is going to be Sucrose, so when I use Sucrose's elemental skill, not only is that going to utilize the 4 piece set bonus from Fairy Distance, but her, her as a character will grant elemental mastery to my overall team. Next, I'm going to swap over to Bennett for his elemental burst which is going to debuff the enemy with Pyro, and it's also going to give my Xingqiu a huge attack boost. And lastly, before switching over to him and using his elemental skill for the finisher, I'm going to swap over to Ember. 
I mentioned this earlier and there's a very specific reason why I use Ember here. Well, here's the reason. Because Xingqiu's elemental skill is two hits, you could trigger Vaporize on both the first and second hit. But in order to do that, we need a character that can deep up the enemy constantly with Pyro and well, Ember is incredible at this with her elemental burst. While ele Ember's elemental burst is active, I'm switching back to Xingqiu here to cast this elemental skill and deal a ridiculous amount of burst damage by triggering the Vaporized reaction twice. There you have it guys, that's my guide for Xingqiu. He is an incredible character that can provide your team with an insane amount of damage reduction as well as burst damage. He fits quite well into most teams and he's extremely versatile in how you decide to build it. With little amounts of resources, he can still be viable as a support character where he provides damage reduction for the team and on the other hand, if you do decide to dedicate a lot of resources into him, he can be such a strong strong addition to your team. The only downside is that for him to really shine and for him to really unlock his full damage potential, Again, he does require C4, which can be challenging for most players to get. But not only that, he does require a lot of resources into his artifacts, weapons, before you really start seeing his damage shine. With all that being said though, I think he's going to be a crazy good sub DPS character for Xiao in the next patch, and even in 1.3 guys, we're going to be getting a free leeway 4 star. So for most people, I would really recommend Xing Chiu, especially the ones who don't have even have one copy of him, or even to those that just want constellations on him. Either way guys, thank you so much for watching my video here today. I hope you learned something new and that this video was really helpful in guiding you on how to build Xing Chou. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment in the section below and I will do my best to get back to you. Now, if you did enjoy my video, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel as I will continue to make more Genshin Impact videos in the future. Either way, Xiao is coming out next week, I will be doing a live stream on YouTube for his release and I will also be making a guide video for him, so stay tuned for that. But with all that being said, guys, I'll catch you guys in the next stream or video. Peace out, everyone.